Hey guys, welcome back to another Mythic Legions review. Four Horsemen has released their 2.0 line, Advent of Decay. And we are starting off with the King of Goblins himself, King Noblin. On the side of the package, we can see the Goblin King with a short background story on the character. On the back, we have the new art for Advent of Decay release, and the same lore from before, from the first release. So let's check them out. Mythic Legions come in collector-friendly packaging. They are easy to remove without damaging the package or to put back in for storage. Here we have the King of the Goblins. King Noglin and his army of goblins live deep underground in the Greyvein Mountains. Locked in the endless war with the cave dwarves who share the same home, the news of a returning demon lord has united King Ironjaw of the cave dwarves and King Noglin of the goblins in hopes of expanding both kingdoms upon Arthur's return. Let's look at some details. The king has some amazing details in his head sculpt. To start in the crown, we can see all sorts of wooden bark details all over with the tiny skull in the middle. His face has some extreme details. Wrinkles cover his face and give him an older look. His face is sculpted in a smug look and is one of my favorite expressions so far. On the side we can see more details sculpted into the crown. They tried to hide the plastic seams by working it into the tree bark and it works out pretty well. The king has a battered and chipped plate of chest armor. The nice reflective copper is washed in a thin layer of dirt and other stains. Definitely a king that gets dirty. The shoulders have a small plated layers of bronze armor stacked over each other. We can see small studs here and there along with some other brighter highlights. On the back we can see even more detail. Even though most of this area will be covered up with the cape and shoulder armor later on, we can still see a ton of detail. The chainmail underneath the armor is a nice bright silver while the rest of the body armor has large slashes and scratches in the sculpting. The arms have very large gauntlets. They look to be in the orcish style with some bladed fins. We can see that the bright copper metal is washing more of that dirt that really gets in between the armor plates. The front of the skirt has some heavy plates of armor stacked over each other. We can notice more battle damage, mostly small scratches. They really did a great job with the dirt all over the figure. It's on everything while not feeling as if it was just randomly painted on. It's mostly on the edges and between layers. The legs have some heavy worn out paint applied here. We can see some smaller fine details like the rivets, leather belt, and buckles. Lastly we have the boots. Small plated layers and more of that dirt finish up the details on the figure. Let's check out the articulation. We have a ball jointed head with a rotating neck peg, stiff shoulders that open halfway, and rotate. The armor can get in the way. We have a bending elbow the armor limits it a bit, rotation at the elbow, and a rotating forearm, wrist that bends forward and back a bit with rotation. We have a ball jointed chest with not much range of motion, a swivel at the waist, very stiff thighs that open. and have a lot of forward and back range. Rotation at the thigh, a knee that bends back, and rotates, a rotating ankle, and rotating foot, with forward and back bending to finish off the feet. Let's check out all the accessories. King Noglin comes with a pair of shoulder armor. Just like all the other Mythic Legions, you easily pop in the peg into the socket on the back. We also get two capes, a torn black cape with dirt painted at the bottom end, and a smaller tattered red cape with dark stains all over. The way I layered the cape is to place the red cape in between the black cape and fold the rest of the black cape over. This gives the larger black cape more of a range to be fluffed out while keeping the red tucked in between with no spillage. We come with a huge staff, a pointed side on one end and a peg on the other to socket in a ball mace head. It's pretty impractical as a weapon and it's far too large for the king. He's probably compensating for something. To get a picture of how tall the staff is, it's almost twice as tall as the goblin king himself. The Egyptian style scimitar is nice and sharp. It's painted very well. The handle has some tiny grooves with gold details on the top and bottom. 
we also get an extremely nice dagger. It has a clip on one side so you can attach it to a belt or whatever you can fit it in. The sheath is very nicely detailed with golden bands and markings all over. We can also remove it to reveal a very sharp dagger. A new accessory to Mythic Legions, all figures will receive a wing adapter. They easily peg into the square hole in the back. If your figure comes at wings, this is how you will attach them. We have a standard Mythic Legion short sword. It has some rust painted on the hilt. We also have the smaller version of the standard belt with the slot for a weapon. Here we can see a size comparison of the 2.0 body, a goblin body, and the standard 1.0 body. The goblins on top of using the smaller 2.0 bodies are using even smaller legs. Keep this in mind if you plan on mixing parts between them. King Noglin is my first introduction into the goblin bodies for Advent of Decay. Overall, I'm pleased with him. The sculpting for Advent of Decay is incredible. It's definitely an upgrade and I look forward to seeing what other new unique figures bring. The smaller bodies worried me, as I expected them to be more fragile, but the tight joints convinced me otherwise. Although some of the joints are arguably too tight, nothing some hot water can't fix. But to someone new to the line, expecting to get the full range of motion, there's a possibility that they might crack the smaller joints. The smaller bodies for 2.0 and the even smaller accessories have definitely shifted Mythic Legions into the more adult collectors only type of action figure. The accessories are amazing with this figure. The double cape really brings out a ton of character. And the details on the cape like the dirt and stains all over really show that there was a lot of effort put into the detail of this new wave of figures. The sculpting on the weapons really goes above what we got in 1.0 also. All of the weapons are very unique. Overall the sculpting is amazing, the paint is amazing, and these are definitely some of the most unique and detailed figures I've seen in a long time for this scale. Monsters and enemies are definitely underrepresented in action figures and these goblins are a solid addition to anyone's collection, regardless if you collect Mythic Legions or not. Alright guys, that'll do it for this review. A ton of more reviews are coming up very soon and you'll know where to find them. Thanks for watching.